Hello my motor enthusiasts. What a spectacle at the British Grand Prix with Lewis Hamilton clinching his ninth win at Silverstone, marking his 104th Grand Prix victory. Unpredictable weather played the puppeteer, turning strategies on their heads as teams juggled with pit stops amidst the rain and then a drying track. Despite the challenge, Hamilton triumphed, ending a victory drought that lingered since the 2021 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. On the flip side, a tough day for George Russell who, starting from pole, had to retire due to a water system issue. And while Max Verstappen secured second place, expanding his championship lead, Lando Norris could only rue a strategic blunder that cost him the lead, finishing third. From wet to dry, the race was an epitome of thrill and strategy at the iconic Silverstone circuit, the heart of British motorsport history. Quite the roller coaster, right? Hello there. I'm Enzo, your guide to everything motorsport, and alongside me, the ever insightful Mr. William. We're bringing you today's dose of adrenaline straight from F1 Motor Fever podcast, and we're here every day to keep you in the loop. Absolutely, Enzo, and it's always a pleasure to dive into the details with you and our listeners. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel, folks. Hit that notification bell, leave us a comment, and share the episodes with your friends and family. Your support keeps our engines running, and we can't do it without you. And you'll want to stick around for today's episode. I can't believe the drama we saw at the British Grand Prix. It's moments like these that remind us why we love this sport so much. Oh, definitely, Enzo. It's not just about the speed and the noise, it's the stories that unfold on that tarmac that have us all hooked. Full throttle, everyone. Let's dive right in. Did you know that Silverstone, the venue for the British Grand Prix, is actually built on the site of a World War II airfield? It's fascinating how it transitioned from a wartime airbase to one of the most iconic circuits in Formula One history. That is intriguing. And speaking of records, Lewis Hamilton's win at Silverstone brings his tally to nine victories at this circuit alone. That's a record for the most wins by any driver at a single circuit in Formula One. Indeed, and let's not forget about the speed. The fastest lap ever recorded at Silverstone was by Max Verstappen in 2020, during the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. He clocked a time of 1 minute and 27.097 seconds. Just shows the sheer pace these drivers and cars can achieve. Absolutely, and while we're on the subject of speed, Formula One cars are some of the fastest circuit racing cars in the world, capable of speeds up to 360 km per hour. That's the kind of speed that really gets your heart racing. What a race at Silverstone, wasn't it? Lewis Hamilton taking his ninth win at his home Grand Prix. The conditions were absolutely manic, dry to wet, and then dry again. It really tested the drivers and their team's strategies to the limit. Indeed, Enzo. It was a real testament to Hamilton's mastery at Silverstone. But let's talk about those conditions. A typical British summer day, right? How do you think that played into the hands of the drivers, especially with the tyre choices becoming so crucial? Absolutely, it's all about timing and adaptability in conditions like these. Hamilton's experience definitely played a huge role. But Max Verstappen also made some critical decisions. Starting on medium tyres, he switched to intermediates just at the right time when the rain started, and that move helped him claw back into contention. That was a pivotal moment. And when the track started to dry, Red Bull's decision to go for hards while most others opted for soft seemed to pay off. It's interesting how such decisions can turn the race on its head. It really is. And it wasn't just a battle at the top. Lando Norris was leading at one point and seemed to be finding his rhythm on slick tyres in the wet, but a delayed pit stop saw him lose out to Hamilton. It just shows how crucial timing is in these conditions. Absolutely, Enzo. The dynamics of Formula One are so intricate. Every second counts, and every decision can be the difference between standing on the podium and watching it from the pit lane. Speaking of decisions, how do you think George Russell feels, having started from pole only to retire with a water system issue? That's got to be gut-wrenching for Russell. Starting from pole and then experiencing such an issue is tough. It's bittersweet for Mercedes, no doubt. They clinched the win but also faced reliability issues. It'll be interesting to see how they bounce back from this. Indeed, and with the season progressing, every point, every finish matters. It's shaping up to be a thrilling championship battle. Moving further down the grid, Carla Sainz managed to climb two places to finish fifth, a solid if unspectacular rescue for Ferrari. Meanwhile, his teammate Charles Leclerc had a more challenging day, finishing 14th and getting lapped after an ill-timed pit stop for intermediates. It just shows how crucial timing and a bit of luck with the weather can be. And how about Nico Hulkenberg? 
a brilliant recovery to sixth after a tough start, really capitalizing on the Haas team's car upgrades. Definitely, Haas seems to be on an upward trajectory. Then there's Aston Martin, both cars in the points with Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso finishing 7th and 8th, respectively. A commendable effort given their recent form. Yes, and Alex Albon's 9th place for Williams must feel like a victory for them. Yuki Tsunoda also did well to clinch that final point, moving up 3 places to finish 10th. It's these midfield battles that add such depth to the race weekends. But it wasn't a great day for everyone, Sergio Perez for instance, starting from the pit lane and finishing 17th, a tough outing for the Mexican. Indeed. And on a more emotional note, Lewis Hamilton's victory was quite poignant. He mentioned it was his last race at the British Grand Prix with Mercedes, making that victory even more special for him. Absolutely. His words post-race really highlighted how much it meant. He's always had a deep connection with Silverstone, and to win like that, in front of his home crowd, must have been incredibly fulfilling. And despite not having the best start, Max Verstappen managed to secure second place, extending his lead over Lando Norris in the championship. His ability to bounce back in races is quite remarkable. It truly is. Verstappen admitted they lacked pace initially but made smart calls on tyre changes, shifting from slicks to intermediates and back, which really paid off. These decisions under pressure are what make or break races. It's these strategic elements, combined with the driver's skill and the team's support, that make Formula One such a compelling sport to follow. Reflecting on the race, it seems that the weather played a massive role, particularly just before the formation lap. That sudden downpour really mixed things up, forcing everyone onto intermediate tyres. That's right. And the decision to switch strategies, especially for those like Verstappen who opted for hard tyres over softs, significantly influenced the race outcome. It's fascinating how the weather at Silverstone always adds that extra layer of unpredictability. Definitely. And Lando Norris, despite being upbeat, was quite self-critical. He acknowledged the joy of the battle but felt both he and the team could have done better. It's that constant strive for perfection that really pushes these drivers. It's interesting you mentioned striving for perfection. I remember being at a karting event recently, and a sudden change in weather threw our plans into disarray much like what we saw at Silverstone. It's a universal challenge in motorsports, isn't it? It certainly is. And speaking of challenges, the pre-race conditions threw another curveball with Carlos signs being told there'd be no more rain shortly before the race started, which didn't pan out as expected. The unpredictability of British weather strikes again. Absolutely, and the track conditions changing so drastically after the rain washed away all the rubber, it's these elements that test a team's adaptability and strategy to the fullest. That's the beauty of Formula One, isn't it? Every race is not just about speed, it's about smart decisions, timing, and sometimes, a bit of luck. The early laps at Silverstone were absolutely thrilling. Verstappen overtook Norris right away to claim third position, which really set the tone for the race. Oh, it sure did. It reminds me of when I was a child and would race my pedal car around our garden, trying to mimic the overtakes I saw on television. Even then, managing to get past my sister felt like winning a Grand Prix. That's a fantastic memory. It's those kinds of personal victories that can spark a lifelong passion for racing. Speaking of on-track action, the battle was intense right from the start, with Hamilton closely tailing Russell and Norris not letting Verstappen out of his sights. Indeed, and it was quite a shuffle in the top 10. Stroll and Leclerc were also making moves, trying to push forward. Leclerc, in particular, was really aggressive, making multiple attempts on Stroll. Absolutely, and the dynamic changed quickly with the doctors enabled as early as the second lap. Hamilton was within striking distance of Russell, which added another layer of excitement. Yes, and the weather played its part too, didn't it? Just like those childhood races where a sudden rain could turn everything on its head, the drivers were warned of an impending rain shower by the sixth lap. It's such elements that make Formula One so unpredictable and thrilling. True, the unpredictability of weather at Silverstone is legendary. And it wasn't just about the weather, there was also a bit of drama with Hulkenberg coming off the track. Fortunately, no penalty was given, adding to the drama of the race. It's these moments that make each race a unique narrative, much like each childhood race felt like a grand adventure. It becomes a story of challenges, strategies, and sometimes, just pure, unbridled joy. By lap 10, the tension was palpable as the drivers were waiting for the rain, predicted to arrive in two phases. The strategy here was crucial, wasn't it? Verstappen was informed about the changing conditions, but it was Norris who took the spotlight, launching an attack on Verstappen around the hangar straight into Stowe. Absolutely, and Norris making that pass look easy really shows his caliber. It's thrilling to see such maneuvers, especially under uncertain weather conditions. 
Indeed, and the drama didn't stop there. By lap 17, Verstappen seemed to be struggling, which allowed Piastri to close in and eventually make his move. The dynamics at this stage were just electrifying. It's fascinating how the weather adds so much complexity to the race. Each team's decision on when to switch tyres could make or break their positions. The anticipation of rain, the actual arrival, then the intensity, it's all a high-stakes gamble. Oh, absolutely. And then there was the moment Hamilton took the lead from Russell. The battle between the Mercedes drivers was intense, pushing each other to the limits and beyond, quite literally, as they both went off track at turn one. That's right, and Norris seized that moment perfectly, proving once again that in Formula One, it's not just about speed, but also sharp strategy and seizing the moment. What a race at Silverstone. The blend of strategic depth, skill, and a bit of luck with the weather conditions, makes Formula One such an exhilarating sport to follow. Moving into lap 20, the drama at Silverstone just escalated. Norris takes the lead from Hamilton in what was a jaw-dropping move as the track conditions continued to challenge the drivers. And wasn't that a pivotal moment? McLaren taking the lead with Norris at the helm was something quite spectacular to witness. Absolutely, and the decisions on tyre changes became critical. Ferrari called Leclerc into the pits, a move mirrored across the field as conditions prompted a flurry of strategic decisions. However, Piastri's overtaking of Russell for third and then Hamilton for second was a phenomenal display of skill and timing. It really showcased the razor-thin margins in Formula 1. The track was slippery, yet some areas remained dry, causing a split in team strategies about switching to intermediates. Yes, and the disagreement on tyre strategy was evident with Hamilton too. Mercedes advised a switch to intermediates, yet Hamilton felt the track had too many dry patches. It's moments like these that can define a race. Indeed, and Verstappen struggling in the RB20 was another twist. Not having the front end to turn his car effectively put him at a significant disadvantage. Oh, and let's not forget the heavy patch of rain that was expected to last over 30 minutes. That added such an unpredictable element to the race. Norris's off-track moment around that time could have been disastrous, but thankfully, his lead was strong enough to keep him in front, at least for a while. What surprised me the most was how quickly things changed after that. By lap 28, after the pit stops, Piastri had taken the lead, with Norris dropping to second and Hamilton third. The dynamics were constantly shifting, making this one of the most unpredictable and thrilling races at Silverstone. It just goes to show, in Formula 1, fortunes can change in the blink of an eye, and it's all about who can best manage the conditions and their nerves. The twists and turns at Silverstone just kept coming. By lap 29, Piastri, after leading, pitted and fell to sixth, which certainly shifted the dynamics at the front. Norris, Hamilton, and Verstappen were then dubbed the Rain Masters by their teams, setting the stage for a thrilling chase. And it's intriguing how one lap can make such a significant difference. Staying out on slicks in the rain cost Piastri dearly. It's moments like these that can define a race. Absolutely, the precision in timing for these pit stops is critical. Moving on, Verstappen seemed to struggle with his intermediates, and by lap 32, almost everyone was battling with the changing conditions. The track was drying, but not entirely. That's a challenging situation for all drivers, isn't it? Transitioning from wet to dry conditions requires a keen sense of timing and an understanding of the track's evolving nature. It does, and speaking of timing, the drama for Russell was unfortunate. Being instructed to retire the car due to a suspected water system issue must have been a huge disappointment, especially as the race was evolving. Yes, that was quite a shocker. And as the race progressed into lap 36, Hamilton started closing the gap on Norris, reporting that the sun was making an appearance which added another layer of strategy to the race. By lap 38, the strategies diverged dramatically. While Norris decided to stay out on intermediates, Hamilton and Verstappen opted for slick tyres, banking on the drying line that was starting to appear. I've never thought about it from that angle. The decision to switch to slicks at that exact moment is indeed a fascinating aspect to ponder. It shows just how much of a chess game Formula One can be, with teams and drivers constantly having to adapt to the evolving conditions on the track. It's a testament to the strategic depth of the sport, where every decision can lead to dramatic changes in the outcome. As the race neared its climax, the question became whether Norris's gamble to stay out longer would pay off or cost him dearly. Speaking of strategy, it reminds me of a chess tournament I attended last month. The intricacies of each move, the quiet tension in the room, it's quite similar to the strategic depth we see in Formula One, isn't it? Definitely an interesting comparison, but perhaps we should keep our focus on the race at hand. Right, apologies for that little detour. Let's get back to the action on the track. As we were discussing, the tyre strategies and their timings are absolutely crucial in the rapidly changing conditions of a race like this. 
Moving into lap 39, we saw Piastri opting for medium tires while Verstappen went for the hards, and Hamilton chose the softs. It seems each had a different strategy, but I wonder if McLaren's decision to keep Norris out for an extra lap was actually a blunder. He lost the lead to Hamilton as soon as he re-entered the track. That's a crucial moment indeed. The tyre choices could have made all the difference. Hamilton on the softs and Norris on the same, yet it seems Hamilton just took control. Absolutely, and by lap 42, Hamilton was maintaining his lead, but Verstappen was posting the fastest laps on the hards, closing the gap significantly. It's fascinating to see how the race dynamics changed with tyre strategies. And Verstappen's charge in the last laps was nothing short of spectacular. Catching up on Norris and finally overtaking him on lap 48, it must have been quite the sight. Yes, but hold on a moment. I recall something about Hamilton and Verstappen having an encounter earlier in the race that might have influenced their driving later on. Not quite sure of the details. Let's give our channel's official reporter a quick call to check that. Hello, all good? We're here discussing the thrilling Silverstone race. Just need to confirm something. Did Hamilton and Verstappen have any sort of clash during the early laps? Can you confirm that for me? Right. Got it. Cheers, catch you later. Hanging up now. Ah, turns out there wasn't any notable incident between Hamilton and Verstappen earlier in the race. My memory must have mixed up events there. No worries, it happens. The race was packed with so many pivotal moments, it's easy to get the wires crossed. But good to have that clarified. It's all about the facts, after all. Indeed, getting back to the race then, by lap 50, the gap between Hamilton and Verstappen dropped to just over three seconds as backmarkers played their part. It's intriguing to consider if Verstappen had enough in hand to truly challenge Hamilton for the win. Just under two laps from the end at the British Grand Prix, and what a finale it was. Lewis Hamilton, keeping his head firmly in the game, managed to maintain his lead to take his ninth victory at this historic circuit. A phenomenal drive from a phenomenal driver, showcasing once again why he's considered one of the greats in Formula One history. The whole weekend was a narrative of intense rivalry and thrilling prospects, with three Brits and a Dutchman all eyeing the victory. The atmosphere was electric, particularly after Saturday's qualifying results. George Russell clinched pole position, continuing his momentum from a win in Austria just the week before. Lewis Hamilton, ever the competitor, secured second place on the grid, despite admitting to leaving some time on the table during the final qualifying session. His determination to make amends in front of his home crowd was palpable. Then we had Lando Norris, starting in third, right behind the Mercedes duo. Norris, clearly eager to move past his recent disappointments, including missing out on pole, was all set to challenge the leaders. It's this mix of ambition and local rivalry that set the stage for a nail-biting race. Speaking of rivalry, the drama between Max Verstappen and Norris was something that everyone had their eyes on, especially after their collision in Austria. Starting together in the second row, their dynamic was crucial come lights out. Verstappen, known for his aggressive racing tactics, was under the spotlight to see how he would bounce back from a less-than-perfect qualifying where he ended up in the gravel. Adding an extra layer of unpredictability was the typical British summer weather, with rain always on the horizon, ready to add a twist to the already tense proceedings. Just behind the top four, Oscar Piastri, although only managing fifth in qualifying, showed potential throughout the weekend and was someone who could have capitalized should any of the leaders slip up. What do you think? The strategic nuance of tyre choices, the personal vendettas being settled on the track, and the ever-present British weather, this race had all the makings of a classic. The Mercedes strategy, the resilience of Hamilton, the audacity of Russell, the redemption arc for Norris, and Verstappen's relentless pursuit, each added a layer to this thrilling narrative. Truly, the British Grand Prix is a testament to the spectacle that is Formula One racing. Moving further down the grid, Piastri will be sharing the third row with Nico Hülkenberg who, quite superbly, managed to outqualify both Ferraris. It's intriguing how the Haas VF24, especially with its upgrades, seems to be extracting more from its package, whereas Ferrari, despite running back-to-back -back comparisons of two specifications of their SF24, seem to have lost their way a bit. That's quite the setback for Ferrari, choosing the older Imola spec over the newer Barcelona spec and still not finding the pace. It's hardly inspiring for a team with such a prestigious history. Indeed, and speaking of inspiring, Hülkenberg's performance might not carry over into the race with the same intensity as qualifying, but Haas have shown slightly better form in race conditions this year. It will be fascinating to see if he can maintain or improve from that sixth starting position. Absolutely, and then there are the returnees to the top 10. Aston Martin, for instance, seems to have made a significant improvement, possibly due to the new front wing they brought for Silverstone. Both Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso have made it into the top 10, with Stroll starting 8th and Alonso 10th. And let's not overlook Alex Albon in the ninth spot. The changing conditions in qualifying really shuffled the pack, and he did brilliantly to get his Williams up there. 
It raises the question, can Albon convert this into points on race day, especially with faster cars starting out of position? It's a good point. Speaking of out of position, Charles Leclerc starting 11th and Sergio Perez right down in 19th after his mishap in Q1, it's going to be a challenging race for them. Perez, in particular, with all the speculation around his future at Red Bull Racing, really needs a strong performance. Next week's test with Liam Lawson in the RB20 might just add that extra bit of pressure. That's right. The dynamics within teams and individual pressures could really turn the race on its head. And let's not forget, this is the 75th British Grand that's been raced since the championship started back in 1950, making it a special one at Silverstone. It's the fifth longest track on the calendar and always delivers an eventful race. Indeed, it does. The mix of historical significance, driver dynamics, and technical challenges makes the British Grand Prix a highlight of the Formula One calendar. Always something to look forward to. What do you think about the prospects for tomorrow's race given all these elements? Well, with the mix of experience and youthful ambition, strategic gambles, and the unpredictable British weather, it's all set to be another classic chapter in the storied legacy of the British Grand Prix. Let's see who writes their name into the history books this time. With three British drivers on the grid, all of whom are race winners, Lewis Hamilton, George Russell, and Lando Norris, there's a palpable sense of excitement here at Silverstone. It's not just a home race for these drivers, but for a majority of the teams as well. Hamilton, in particular, has a record that's nothing short of legendary here at the British Grand Prix. He's clinched victory eight times, sharing the Formula One record for the most wins at a single Grand Prix with Michael Schumacher, who won eight times at the French Grand Prix. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? Hamilton has not only secured pole position seven times here, but has also stepped on the podium a record 13 times. No other driver has seen the podium more at a home race. Absolutely, and if we delve into the history of wins here, since the year 2000, every winner has started from fourth place or higher. Mercedes, in particular, have dominated this track, having won eight of the last 11 races. It's a testament to their strategy and execution. Speaking of winners, we've seen quite a few in recent times. Besides Hamilton, we have Fernando Alonso, Carlos Sainz, and Max Verstappen, who've all had the honor of winning the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Verstappen's win last year, and his victory in the 70th anniversary race during the pandemic, added quite the chapters to Silverstone's storied history. Indeed, and with Britain, alongside Italy, being one of the two ever-present races on the Formula One calendar, the historical significance of this event just keeps growing. This year marks the 58th race held at Silverstone. And let's not forget, Ferrari, despite their recent struggles, have won the British Grand Prix 18 times, a record that speaks volumes about their legacy. The blend of historical depth, personal achievements, and team strategies converging at this iconic circuit makes the British Grand Prix a pivotal point in the season. With the current standings in the 2024 F1 World Championship, each lap, each turn could dramatically alter the course of the title race. It's these layers that make Formula One more than just a motorsport. It's a dynamic narrative played out at breakneck speeds, where history, talent, and technology clash lap after lap. As we approach the final stages of the race, the tension is palpable, and the stakes couldn't be higher. William, fancy taking a gander at what the internet has to say about today's race. Right, listen to this. The main buzz online is about Lewis Hamilton winning the 2024 British Grand Prix. The comments are absolutely teeming with opinions. Ryan, or shall we say Ryan the Muse fan, kicked things off with a remark about McLaren's strategy, calling it a quote, disaster class, unquote. Oh, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? It gets sharper. Another user, let's call him Xander, piped up saying McLaren didn't just fail to secure a double podium, they quote, double failed, unquote. Absolute horrid strategy, he said. Blimey, the viewers aren't pulling any punches today. Indeed, they are not. One user even quipped, Ferrari would be proud, referring to the often criticized strategic decisions of the Ferrari team. And talking of decisions, another spicy take was about the tires. One commentator noted McLaren got it massively wrong by not double stacking Norris and Piastri, and then putting Norris out on used softs instead of new mediums. Right, Piastri was flying until then, wasn't he? Exactly. One user, let's call him Ron, even coined the term, disastry, playing on Piastri's name. And it doesn't stop there. There was a lot of chit-chat about tyre management too. One user highlighted that Hamilton's expertise in tyre management was likely what clinched his victory, despite the chaos behind him. Sounds like the tyres and the timing of the pit stops were the real MVPs today. Absolutely. 
and despite the strategy blunder, it was noted that Piastri himself seemed quite sure about sticking with mediums, calling it the right choice. Shows the lad's got a level head on his shoulders. Interesting insights from the armchair strategists online. It's always fascinating to see how passionate the fans are, and how every decision on the track gets dissected from all angles. It certainly does. Makes you wonder how these decisions play out in the heat of the moment, doesn't it? It does indeed. Well, let's see how the teams take this feedback and if it influences their strategies moving forward. Always a learning curve in this sport. Thanks for tuning in to F1 Motor Fever podcast today. We've had a thorough look at the British Grand Prix, analyzing everything from tyre strategies to team tactics. It's been fantastic discussing all these elements with you. Please, if you've enjoyed our chat, subscribe and activate those notifications so you never miss out. And if you're feeling generous, why not share our channel with your motorsport-loving mates? Your support truly makes all the difference. Absolutely, and remember, we're here dishing out the latest and greatest from the world of Formula 1. Don't forget, we've got some cracking content lined up that you won't want to miss. So keep your engines revving and your calendars open. We're immensely grateful for your company and enthusiastic participation. It's always a pleasure and we're already looking forward to the next time we get to share such engaging discussions with you all. So, keep those comments coming, let us know what you think, and what you'd love to hear next. Your feedback is what helps us steer this ship. Until next time, remember, pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold.